welcome to the Dawn of an Arrow Wellbeing podcast that brings together some of the world's most innovative thinkers to weigh in on matters concerning the future of ourselves and our planet, and to discuss that future not as something to be predicted, but to be created. In each episode, your hosts, Irvin Laszlo and Frederick Tsao, and moderator, Nora Cesar, will converse with guests from numerous disciplines to help us navigate a new worldview, which derives its wisdom from a synthesis of ancient and modern, East and West, science and spirituality. From these seemingly divergent perspectives, we will demonstrate how we can create a new narrative and usher in the dawn of a better era. Welcome everyone. Today we will have a very special episode featuring our co-host, Frederick Tsao, sharing some of his extensive knowledge of the ancient Chinese spiritual tradition of Taoism. The body of today's episode was recorded on May 14th, 2022 for the New Paradigm of Sentience and Consciousness Global Symposium, which was presented by the Laszlo Institute and the AITI Institute. Frederick Zhao is a fourth generation family steward of IMC Group. Assuming chairmanship in 1995, he successfully transformed a shipping business to an industrial supply chain. With more than 40 years' experience as an entrepreneur, Fred has worked successfully with business partners and governments in multiple markets across diverse cultures. A visionary entrepreneur, Fred believes East-West integration is imminent as the well-being and happiness economy arises. Born in the East and educated in the West, Fred is uniquely positioned to bridge this integration. As chair of Family Business Network International, Council of Wisdom, Fred promotes family business reform to rise to this challenge. Fred has initiated research that has led to the publication of over 30 Chinese books. He has co-authored two English books, including The Dawn of an Era of Well-Being, with our co-host Irvin Laszlo. In his latest work, One Choice, One World, published in June 2023, he paints a picture of the new world order of narrative economics that serves well-being for life. Fred also takes a deep interest in the Chinese spiritual tradition of Taoism, of which he has an extensive knowledge and which profoundly informs him in his daily life and work. Taoism is an ancient spiritual practice native to China, but its origins date back to prehistoric times. Its stresses are finding and living in alignment with the Tao, which is roughly translated into English as the way or the road. It shares characteristics of both a philosophy and a religion. Now on to our program where Alexander Laszlo, the symposium host will provide a few more opening remarks of introduction for Fred. I hope you will enjoy the program. Let me uh, introduce to you our first speaker. Fred Tsao is a honored member of uh, also the Laszlo Institute as an allied partner with his organization, uh, ITEA. Uh, He's going to be speaking to us uh, about the Taoist and traditional ancient Chinese perspectives on the topic of our symposium. Um, He was born uh, in the East, but educated in the West. So has this wonderful combination of uh, perspectives of our world. Um, He is a fourth generation leader of IMC Pan-Asia Alliance Group and became the chairman in 1995 and transformed the family business from a traditional shipping company 
to a diverse multinational conglomerate. So his background is really one of living in the world and engaging with it uh, and, uh, and and bringing his wisdom of the ancient Chinese cultures and the Taoist perspective. He has worked successfully with business partners and governments from all over the world, uh, particularly with an interest on the family business and network and the exploration of family businesses role in the global system. He's also a published author with over 30 books in Chinese, and uh, he co-authored a book with my brother Chris Laszlo um, on quantum leadership and new consciousness in business. He also contributed a piece titled Reconnecting to the Source in the Mirror of Chinese Culture in a book with Irvin Laszlo titled Reconnecting to the Source, which was published in 2020. Without further ado, I will pass it over to you, Fred. Thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, hi, um, everybody. It's a um, great pleasure to be here to explore a very important topic uh, dear to my heart, because now in the global environment, we need a global common sense. But without a global language like English, we will not be here today having this global meeting. Same thing, there needs to be a global language on worldview, because worldview is a foundation creating culture, and culture is economics, and then we know it's an economic world. And so this all interlinking, this holistic system now is coming to the era of unification from the material era of separation. So this integration process of humanity, the globalization, in a human challenge of, of, of sustainability, globalization, technology application, is it is a particular crossroad of energy and consciousness where the unifying consciousness needs to create this common language. And we all know what religion and worldview, in fact, all conflicts started with different worldviews that we have. The most severe conflict leads to war. And so now this is a very, very important topic that we're exploring, that we hope to find a scientific language on consciousness that can actually be the English of the worldview. A crossing the religious, crossing the worldview that separates us severely today. So today, my coverage is Taoism. And as you know, in China, Taoism is evolving to integrate with many, but particularly with Confucianism and Buddhism. But I should begin with Taoism first. So when you talk about worldview, the Chinese believe that there's actually three a worldview. There is a worldview of the cosmos and a worldview of the life, which you need to answer your existential question, and the, and the worldview of values. But I think uh, at the end of the day, it manifests itself into the culture and into the attitude as we come into contact of external stimuli, be it things, be it work, events, be it people, or be a situation that we find ourselves in. What is our attitude in responding? That is a true worldview of consolidation of the three worldviews, our attitude. Now, we also know in science, at the end of the day, everything goes back into a neural wiring, our personality, our thinking pattern, our body movement, and how do it actually physicalize and embed it through experience and neural wiring into a set of Neural wiring. So the mind body spirit uh, aspect is actually more like spirit mind body. Now we know that the cosmos is mind, but the essence of the cosmos before the mind, where everything is not expressed, is actually a spirit, is an energy. So on the cosmology, the, 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 the Taoists uh, believe that. Um, that there is a wuji. The wuji is like the quantum field. It's not energy, that's the source. The wuji is also called the wu lai zhuang in the Buddhist tradition, and there's a nature there. And then there's an energy called Tao, which is a, the energy of evolution that created all things. And yet all things have spirituality in it. 
all things are considered are linked to the what they call the cosmos and it's therefore spiritual and that the yin and yang which is you know the sine curve vibration is a foundation of this holographic reality of Taiji, which is all things. So Wu Ji is a field, Tao is a creative evolution energy, and Taiji, it's its expression. And inside of Taiji, you see the yin and yang, which is a vibrational expression, moving each other, but overlapping each other into complexity. And in there, they created, they called the yin and yang two polarity to the four expression. Then the four expression is interpreted into the ba hua, which is the eight condition. And the eight condition, because it's three dimension, becomes 64 elements of understanding the three dimensional world. And inside it, there's nature of this material. And everything like this body is created from fire, water, um, a fire, water, wind, and soil. And it's a reconfiguration of these things. And therefore it follows a rule called the five elements. And thus the whole Chinese culture is based on this. Now, there's a very important, now everybody heard about the I Ching, which is the book of change. And it comes from the origin of they call um, uh, a legend of a deer jumping up and there's pattern on the deer. And then a turtle clawing up, there's another pattern that's mathematics, the original eating, the numbers. And so from there, they have a cousin of the eating called the Yellow Emperor Canon, which is change, interpret change in the human body. Now there's a medical book. In that book, it talked about how is human born? Hey, contrary to what we think, it's not mother, la father, and then make us. It says the nature of the cosmos, not energy, and the energy of the universe starts dancing. Then the spirit, in this case, the spirit is Tao, enters into this dance, and then your soul is created. We have three soul. There is a soul that belongs to one part of us, that is our DNA historic record of just us, of this being of consciousness, which you can think about like it spits up from a collective consciousness into individual consciousness and it's vibrating independently over time, which it doesn't exist. Then there's a collective consciousness, there's a collective soul, and then there's a, they call the heavenly soul. So the heavenly soul, the material soul, so the cosmos soul, the universe soul, and your individuated soul. This constitutes to our one soul. Your individual soul is present all the time with the collective soul and the cosmos soul actually accompanying you all the time, but not necessarily entering you. Most of the time, the present is your individual soul. That comes to call the seven energy of materialism. The seven energy of materialism is both your body energy, which constitutes your, uh, your functioning and immune system. It's also energy and it's also your emotions, which is how you drive things. From there comes your mind heart. And from the mind heart becomes what we call material consciousness. And from material consciousness, you have an orientation because you have the material conscious, you have the receptor, the sentient receptors, and then you come desire, then you come thoughts. And so with thoughts, we create everything, our body included. So it is not a thing that father and mother, and there's some DNA <laughs> from father and mother, this is the creation process of sentient. 
Now, everything is spiritual. Everything has consciousness in the now system. However, if we look at the so there's the flies and insects have insects consciousness, an animal is a sentience of animal consciousness. But human being as an animal is special because human is the most conscious of all things. And so in Taoism, it says, of course, Tao is great. Cosmo is great. Universe is great. But human is great. Because in the sentient world, in this material world, human beings are most creative. They express the Tao. They are creative. And yet we are drowned in not realizing we are not just a sentient being. And we got lost into our our sentient receptors and emotions and feelings. No, we are truly not that. Because we have these receptors, we go outward in seeking. And therefore, we forgot that who we are is not outward, but going back into your consciousness through the mind heart, through the energy, back to your soul, and then back into your cosmos soul. And there sits your calling. And you connect to that calling to operate. So there's a practice doing that. The practices are different, I'll explain. So animals, they talk about the 12 zodiac animal, which is the nature of animal. And yet human has all 12 nature in us. Sometimes with a monkey, sometimes with a lion, sometimes a fearful like a mouse, all right? Sometimes we're pig. <laughs> we all know when we're pig, right? But, so we have all 12, but animal can only be one. The human being is a special animal. We can be all zodiac energy. We have all of them. And we have more choice, more freedom, and more spirituality. And therefore, we are the same position. We are the master because we have a choice. Universe has no choice. We have a choice. Animals have very limited choice because their nature is like that. The sentient being of animals, it's its nature. It does not have the flexibility and the consciousness level as human. So I'm going to focus talk about human. Because all things, as Irvin says, have consciousness. The level of sentience is how we process information. So human is where we focus on. Now think about humans today, huh? We can take a bio of soil and then make it into an AI. We can take this AI, integrate into our body, and now we have bionic man. <laughs> we can even grow some flesh over it from our own cells, and now we can actually be half a machine. And in the future, we can do a chip, and we can manage what a thousand machine doing for us with our thoughts. It's coming. The fourth industrial revolution, it's coming. Information era is going quantum. So human being is like demigod nowadays, right? So this we have all see. So in Taoism, it says, if that is the K, the Taoists aspire to become a real person, a real human. So Taoist says, we're not human, we're not real. A real human is not like this. We are not moving into full potential because our self is not what we perceive, is not our desire. We're not it. Our self, true self is way back there in the consciousness. And we're all creative. And in fact, it was said in the Yellow Emperor, when you become a true person, you can choose not to die. That is Tao. So how do you get there? The Taoist is very interesting. He says, 
when you are the energy, which is your, your consciousness. Now, energy is not quite consciousness yet. It is kind of a kind of muddled thing. It is consciousness, but the consciousness of consciousness, everything is there. It does not do any work. So when it moves into a separation, it can actually start doing, otherwise it's just a puddle, right? You cannot evolve when it's a puddle. And so you need to separate till you can move and move so it can actually evolve. So evolution is its nature, right? It's the nature. Evolution is the work. And we have a calling in the evolution process through this thing. So now it comes down to uh, understanding uh, what it is. And he says in Tao Te Ching, the first chapter, see, the Chinese really good, and I learned that. Read the first chapter in Chinese book and read the last chapter in Western books <laughs> because that's only worth reading. The answers are there. So the first chapter, it says in Tao Te Ching, and many of you probably know, is that the Tao you can call the Tao is not the Tao. And name is a mother of all things, you name it. Now we all know it's a puddle up thing into our right brain. And even when meditating, we can measure increased activity in neural firing. We don't know what we experience. And we have every day we experience like, oh, I don't, I don't know what I'm feeling. And then all of a sudden you said, I'm frustrated. Boom! All of a sudden everything seems to be clear because then it translates. The minute you name it, it starts forming. The thought is creation. The thought it starts creating and focusing and collapsing all the energy into the thought. And so the Tao says, name is the mother of all things. If you are desireless, which is our own nature, on a higher consciousness, you can see the mystery. You can demystify. There is no mystery. But the minute you have desire, you can only see the manifestation of the material world. And that's what you cannot understand. Because in the fundamental of holistic material in material what we call spiritual or higher level of consciousness dimension beyond time and space that's one the expression is a duality and you try to understand it's one it's almost impossible it's like behavioral psychology it becomes so complex you cannot understand human because every moment we're changing, our mind keeps changing. And you say, oh, I surmise he changed his mind because he has a trauma. He has a this, he has that. It's really difficult to study that and understand. But if you understand the fundamental of holism, and then you study human nature change, like Buddhism, like Buddhist psychology. Now, Buddhism is really quite different. So Taoism, in the whole process, the thing is very simple. I said in life, they said, they call Ming Dao Lian Dan Qi Ji Yingsi. Very simple. Ming Dao means be the vehicle of Tao. Do your calling. Express it. Be the vehicle. Let the Tao express it through you. That means that you all the time intuitive plug in there. Don't think too much, right? But you need to think to do work, but there is a sequencing you develop, how you use your mind. The second thing is do energy work. And the energy work called Lian Dan, uh, Dan Energy Center. And they use the body, the first level of energy work is use energy to transmute your hormone for health. Now your body is like, whoa, very balanced. The next level of Lian Dan, so the, uh, Lian Dan Hua Qi, Lian Qi Hua Shen, now you get the energy. You further do energy work. Now you're moving to the mind side. And you continue to do that, and then you move into Shen Shen, is 
Dao, Shen is a creative you. Shen is what it creates you, that enters the creator of your soul. And then you do more energy and practice well than stillness work. It's Lian Shen Huan Shu. And then you go back to emptiness, the Wu Qi. That's the process of energy work. And there's a whole system of energy work of movement and stillness and stillness and movement. And of course, it has to support the whole system, huh? that you'll become a vehicle and all that. And the last thing is living habits. Very important. Your body's not clean, you know, you know very well. Your body's not clean, the water's no good, your chemistry is no good, the electrical magnetic transmission is no good. IT is no good. Your little wiring is no good. You're just no good. You cannot get information flowing. And so there's a pattern of living, which is what you're designed to do, which is in line with the universe, in line with your rhythm, in line with the local, in line on the spot energy. Like we have an energy now. We have to live with it and work with it moment to moment. So that is the process. Now to supplement with other confusions about ethics. So they want to create a sage and they have a Thai system, say, and the Buddha is- I didn't catch that, could you try again? <laughs> and Buddhism is about, as you know, don't even be human, goodbye. <laughs> so Buddhism has become real human. Taoism, uh, Taoism the real human. Confusion is like, hey man, just be a good guy, sage. And Buddhism said, go beyond, don't come back, don't be a human. So they all become one collapse into one system. And all are talking about the thing called middle. China, as you know, is called the middle kingdom. The middle kingdom doesn't mean it's the middle of the world or middle of the space. Middle means center. The centerness is not a, 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 a static center, it's a dynamic because it's energetic, you see? So this dynamic center is a, the line between the yin and yang, it's a dynamic center. So you cannot really have a form to look at the center. And Buddhism, Taoism, and Kanji is called the right centerness. You center and you'll be just appropriate, just right. That means you're in the right position, perfectly balanced. I wanna say thank you for your invitation. I hope my little talk has been informative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fred, for this compelling and informative talk on Taoism. And with this episode, we now conclude season three of Dawn of an Era of Wellbeing. We hope you enjoyed listening to our program and look forward to engaging with you again in the near future. Until then, I am Nora Cesar with our hosts, Erwin Laszlo and Frederick Zhao, and we thank our co-host, Fred, for this wonderful special presentation again. We also thank our worldwide audience, as well as our wonderful production team, including Kenichi Sugihara and Tai Suki, and those many others at Octave Institute. From whatever nation state or emotional state you might be in, this is the place to tune in. We invite you to join us for more episodes of Dawn of an Era of Wellbeing podcast, as well as to gift this book to yourself or a loved one. It's a true companion for these challenging times. The bravado of our ego has historically gotten the better of us. So please remember, this time when building that new paradigm for humankind, let's include humankindness. Stay tuned and stay attuned. Thank you for listening. Dawn of an Era of Wellbeing is a co-production of the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research, the Octave Institute, and Selag Books Publishers. Our theme music is Chimera by Biba Dupont. 
For more information about Donna Bonero well-being, please visit our website at www.thelasloinstitute.com. If you enjoy our program, please remember to subscribe to us on your podcast service. And if you are using Apple Podcasts, please give us a rating to help other listeners learn about our show. See you next time.